So where do I see real estate prices headed in the year 2020? Let's talk about that. Hey, let's talk about where real estate prices are headed next year. Um, after all, I have a one year track record of exceeding my prediction in 2019. So let's talk about 2019. Let's start there before we get into next year. In December of 2018, uh, the Fed chairman tightened money supply and signaled that they were going to start letting interest rates get up to a more natural level. So the feeling in the housing industry was that mortgage rates will start to creep up towards 5%. And because of that, um, I felt that real estate prices, instead of going up at 6.5% like they were, will only go up about 3, 3.5%, maybe even in some areas in Arizona, um, be flat if rates get up to 5%. Then on January 4th, here comes Chairman Powell going, um, yeah, I'm, I might have spoke too soon. Uh, we're going to be looking at, at further rate cuts. So where are we today? We're looking at interest rates that are below 4%. And in 2019, we grew at 6.5% in the Arizona market, and particularly the Phoenix Valley. Um, so I predicted 3.2, we grew at 6.5. So where are we headed this year? Um, this year, rates, you know, as long as they stay down there in the low, uh, low fours, high threes, I don't see any reason for it to slow down. Um, when you look at the job growth in Arizona, uh, we are really getting some strength and momentum in the manufacturing sector. You take a look at Chandler. Chandler has the Intel facility um, and it's got an $80 billion expansion budget. They're spending $7 billion of it now, so they've got a ways to go. And then uh, we've got Northrop Grumman as well. It just had a big expansion. Uh, but there's some things out there that I'm worried about. So I'm going to tell you what they are. Uh, here's my, my biggest question in, on... Um, the United States economy as a whole. I mean, we're seeing good numbers. We're seeing unemployment at record lows. We're seeing stock market at record highs. Um, we're seeing, you know, some good, some really good job growth. Um, not everywhere, but uh, particularly in Arizona. So with all of this good news out there, can somebody tell me why the Fed is still pumping billions and billions of dollars into the economy? Uh, particularly the repo market last week was 172 billion. It's not talked about very much, but why is the Fed still injecting so much money if everything is so good? You know, unemployment's a lagging number. So if there's going to be a recession, you're always going to have a low unemployment number before you have a recession. Once you have a recession, then you have a high unemployment number. So it is probable that we're, we're going to see our growth flatten out or maybe up in negative territory. And then how low can rates go? Uh, most of the emerging markets in the world right now are already at zero to negative rates like Japan and uh, many parts in Europe where if you're going to put money in the bank, you actually pay the bank for them to hold your deposits in the bank. That's negative interest rates. We're not there yet. Uh, we're still at 1.5% in the Fed's overnight rate, but man, we're getting close. And why? Um, well, there's a lot of reasons. There's a lot of things going on underneath the radar that, that a lot of people don't see. Uh, Deutsche Bank in Germany is in really bad shape. Um, they're not going to go under is kind of the, the feeling by a lot of economists, but they're, they're in tough shape. One of the reasons they're in tough shape is because China's in really bad shape. Now, it's impossible to get good numbers out of China. Uh, they lie. They're a communist country. But you can look at what they're doing. So they kind of went on a, um, a binge for the past couple of years um, on a aggressive cash for clunkers program over there where they're trying to get rid of combustible um, you know, engines and get all electric. Well, guess what Germany makes? They don't make any electric cars. So it's really hurting their automobile market. Um, the economy is slowing down in China, and one of their biggest trading partners is Australia. Australia has had a 30-year run of expansion that's starting to show signs of stress. So China is something to watch. The whole trade deal, uh, that might work itself out, but nobody knows for sure. Hong Kong, 
that's that's a problem. Um, you know, that's Hong Kong is a very vibrant economy. They don't want to be a part of the communist regime. Uh, that could really mess things up in the year 2020. So that's something we need to we need to watch closely, and that'll have an effect. While Arizona is growing and everything's going great, um, what if the credit market freezes? So what I mean about the credit market is, you know, the ability for banks to loan money to you and me. And if we've got this repo market that had this hiccup at the end of September and everybody was surprised by it. And now they've actually the Fed set up like a Rico Depot, a repo market depot um, where funds are going to be readily available for banks to have the appropriate reserves that they're uh, looking for. If that doesn't work and credit markets freeze, I don't care how good the Arizona economy is. There goes housing. Open door, offer pad, gone in a day. They make money off of uh, acceleration of home prices. Zillow shifting their model to buying and selling homes, gone. Now have to go back to just being a good website for people to, to look at. So um, that could happen. Do I think it's going to happen 2020? I don't think so, but I think it could. So if I'm looking at the real estate market in Arizona, really strong this year. It's December now. Um, take a look. Well, it's going to be December in a couple days. Take a look on Facebook. And what you know what you're going to see? You're going to see these lending institutions having these great Christmas parties. And everybody's already saying, we've had our best year ever. We've got the best team. We are the one. Everybody's having a good year. Real estate brokerages are having a fantastic year. Their Christmas parties are going to be epic. I don't think you're going to see any real estate broker that's going to put a cheese plate on the conference table and say, well, sorry, it wasn't as good as I thought it was going to be this year. That signals the top of the market. A good friend of mine who's a lender told me that that's one of the indicators he watches. When the Christmas parties get really good, it may be at the peak of the market and we're getting towards a turn down. Um, simple, maybe stupid little analogy to look at, but, but it, it, could ha it signals that you're at the top. If you're looking right now, I, I wrote an offer last week on a home and we were up against 15 other offers in two days. That tells you we're at the very top of a market with very low supply and pretty high demand in the under 400,000 price range. Uh, between 400 and 500 is still really good. If you're sitting on a home and you're thinking of selling uh, next year um, or the first quarter or second quarter, uh, there's every indication that now is the time to do it, especially if there's possibility for some uncertainty in the market. You know, if you're thinking about selling, look, it's hot now. Uh, homes are selling quickly now. Interest rates are low now. Unemployment is low now. And you're waiting for maybe a little more equity. Um, if you're thinking of selling, pull the trigger. Um, that's the way I would look at 2020. If you're thinking of buying, I'm going to say the same thing I've always said. If you're going to buy with a fixed interest rate and stay put, then don't worry about it. You're not buying a stock, you're buying a place to live. So in 2020, especially millennials that are getting into the entry market and they're worried there's going to be another crash. Look, it. I've had several crashes in my lifetime, up, down, up, down. Keep that payment level because your rent is not going to stay level. Your rent may go sky high, it may go down. But if you buy with a fixed rate mortgage, really under 4%, are you kidding me? Your payment is going to stay the same. So let the economy have its hiccups. Now, if you lose your job, that's a whole different ball game. Uh, that's going to mess you up even if you're renting. So um, keep your payment the same. and. Uh, and, and don't worry about, you know, the ups and downs of real estate. You're going to be in it for the long haul. Now, if you're an investor and I'm not an economist, um, do I want to invest in real estate right now at the peak of the market? Um, if you've got money to invest, why not look at emerging markets like Panama um, and Spain and Portugal? They have excess supply right now and their economies are starting to perk along pretty good. So that's something to consider. Um, again, I'm not an economist, but I'd hedge with a little bit of gold as well. More importantly, I'd like to know what you think. Put your comments below. Tell me where you, where you think the real estate market's headed, both nationally and in Arizona. And let me know what your confidence level is going into 2020. If you have any questions, shoot me an email at rick at rickhelps.com.